Praise the Lord, brethren. Shall we pray? Father, I want to thank you for how you have started with us yesterday. We know that you are speaking to us as a father willed to a child or children that he loves so much. We ask that today you yet speak and lead us and help us and take us to a place where you will be pleased with us and we will have all the benefits in you, including eternal life. In Jesus' mighty name we are prayed. Amen. Um, brethren, yesterday the Lord started with us on the importance of being led by God and that it is possible that you follow tradition, you follow religion, and yet you end up making God hungry. It is possible that men of God in your life will give instructions. This is how we are going to be doing it now. And you follow. And they did not hear from, hear from God. They only follow their flesh. And everybody that followed them in that assignment automatically uh, has gone astray. And we also learned yesterday that if God will punish uh, the person. God will not ask, what did your Jew say? What did your senior pastor say? What did your group leader say? What did your prayer leader say? And say, okay, because of what he said, I hereby forgive you. God doesn't do that. God is going to ask you, the instruction I gave you, have you followed it? If you are yet to follow it, or if you did not follow it, you are a disobedient person, and hellfire is the way to a, for a disobedient person. And it will be painful to have suffered on earth and still go to eternity to suffer. It doesn't make any sense at all. Um, you know, on earth, you did not have multiple girlfriends and boyfriends. You stayed true to your marriage. Or if you are single, you kept your body. They were drinking to stupor. You did not join them to drink. The latest nonsense they are doing, you did not join. And um, you, you know, Sundays that you are supposed to be sleeping in your house and enjoying yourself, you were going to church. The money you are supposed to spend for yourself, you are paying it to church. And you are doing a lot of sacrifice. In the name of being a Christian. And yet, God, if God at the end of the day did not recognize all that you have done, those who are sinners, who use their whole life on earth, who will know that out of their existence, they spent 70 years to satisfy themselves. Now they now go to hell and suffer. At least they've, they've enjoyed part. But you, if you do not follow the instructions of God, if you decide to replace God with man and put man as your instructor without the Holy Spirit, without the ability to get confirmation if what that man is saying is correct or wrong, and you spend the whole of your life supposedly working for God, and at the end of the day, God says, I don't know you. Brethren, it doesn't make any sense. That's why Brother Paul said, if our hope is in Christ is of this world alone, then we have all, all men miserable. Let me explain that. If the benefit of your giving, the benefit of your prayer, the benefit of your sowing, the benefit of your tithe, the benefit of your hours spent in the church is only to be blessed on earth. Then you are a miserable Christian. Your life is miserable because you have suffered yourself on earth and there is no access to heaven. That is, that is, that is a sad story. If you are looking for a very bitter story, then that is a bitter story. I need to paint this picture very clearly here. Very clearly. 
I am being led by the pain of those who have died, who are fervent in the church, who are fervent in Christ. And they thought they were serving Christ, whereas they were serving man. They died. We put them in fine coffins. We celebrated them, but they are in hell. It is painful that we cannot go back to minister to them. It is painful that we cannot go back to teach them. But for those that are still alive, and that God will grant us the access to talk to, that God will grant them the access to listen to this kind of message. We will be very blunt and clear. If you get hot and angry at the words we speak, but at the end of the day, you, you, the Holy Spirit is able to minister to you, and you are able to get your way right, and you finally make it to heaven, brethren, that would be a wonderful bargain. Even if after hearing this message, you exist the group, and delete the group from your phone and say, I don't want to have anything to do with this brother family again in my life. He's preaching bitter messages. He's not preaching what I want to hear. And if at the end of the day, what you have heard still touch your life later in future, and you begin to cry to God and get your instructions from God and move with God, it is a fantastic bargain. It's a fantastic bargain. So, I am being led by the I don't know I don't, I don't have to put it to words I don't want you to go to hell I don't want you to walk on earth and there is no reward in heaven I don't want you to have spent years in choir practice imagine going for choir practice you go for riaza you go for vigil your time that you are supposed to spend you are busy singing songs you buy uniforms and all that has not one record in heaven because you are doing it out of disobedience. God never called you into that department. Never. I, I, I want us to paint the picture very clearly. I want you to sit down and think about your own things that you are, you are currently doing now. I'm not, uh, uh, maybe this message is more to pastors, workers, and those that are, you know, more churchy. Those who are here to give their life to Jesus Christ, or those who are still playing about, well, maybe God might speak to you one way or the other, but maybe God wants to really talk to those of us who are in ministry. You are a pastor. Who called you to be a pastor? Who? Who called you? Did God tell you he wants you there? Did God ask you to start that ministry? Did God send you? Did God call you and say, I want you to be a pastor in my barrier? Is that Was that instruction from God? Or was it your senior pastor that said, Ah, I want to promote you. And he promoted you. And he said that God told him. And yet God did not tell you. Of course, we have ministers of God who God speaks to. But Paraventor, that great father in the Lord, did not hear from God, but flesh led him to speak to you. And what you are doing currently is in disobedience. Did God speak to you concerning the tithe that you are paying? Did God personally speak to you? Did God speak to you concerning the seed you sowed? Did he send you to that place all because the man said, if you do not give, you are under a curse, so that you not be caused by him, you went to give. Probably God did not even speak to him. Many times, Seth, I can confirm that God did not speak that thing. <laughs> because I can't find that instruction anywhere with Jesus. So, at the end of the day, the things that you are doing, have you not been wasting your time, wasting your finances, wasting your day, wasting everything in disobedience? And now let's leave those that are working in church. Let's come to those that are working. 
that business you are doing, that company you are working in, could it be that you are in a place where God never sent you? And is totally in disobedience to God? Listen, the life of a Christian is a continuous sacrifice to God. Every life of a Christian is a ministry. So when God sends you to a company to go and work, it is a ministry. When God sends you to go and open a business at a certain place, it is a ministry. Now, if God has sent you to open a business in the market square, and you have opened a business in the shopping complex, you are in, you are, you are, you are in business in disobedience. Uh, 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 um, let, let me let me replace so that some of us can understand. So look at, uh, but let me just eating us, eating us. What is this thing? <coughs> Excuse me. Um, when you give your life to Jesus Christ, you give your life to Jesus. What makes up your life? Your money, your clothes, your body, your sleep. Your waking moments, your eating, your business, your education, your certificate, your marriage, your children, your family, your in-laws, your past, your present, your future, everything that make up your life, you give it to Jesus. And I need to give this example very well. If I call you and I say, I hand over my phone to you, that this phone belongs to you, it is now your property. And I say, I dash you the phone. Can I come to your house the next day again to be knocking the door and be telling you what's the password? Because I want to send a message from the phone I give you. You are going to ask me, did you borrow me or did you give me? Because if I gave you the phone, I have no right over it again. It is now the owner of the phone that has the right. You are free now to put whatever jacket you want to put. You are free to put whatever network you want to put. The wallpaper you love, you put. You are free to call anybody you feel like calling. I have no right over whatever you are doing with that phone again because it is no longer mine. I have given it out. When you gave your life to Jesus Christ, you gave everything that make up your life. Everything. Now you are no longer the owner of the body. You are no longer the owner of the finance. You are no longer the owner of, of, uh, of, of, the, of your brain. You are no longer the owner of your wife, your children, your husband, your business, your, your career, your certificate, your car, your house. Everything now belongs to Jesus. Now, if you have truly given it to Jesus, it is now Jesus that will tell you what he wants. It's Jesus that will tell you how you will manage that car. When it's time to service the car, it's Jesus. When you are good to go to work, it is Jesus. The type of work you are supposed to do, it is Jesus. The kind of house you are supposed to live, it is Jesus. You can't just rent a house because it's fine or because the rent is low. You have to ask Jesus. Every aspect of your life must be led by Jesus. Everything must be led by Jesus. Every aspect of your life must be Jesus directed. So, even the money you have is not yours. The asset you have acquired is not yours. It belongs to Jesus. He now decides how he wants to use it. Now, if you cannot hear from Jesus, if you and Jesus cannot speak, if you have not made your, the, the number one priority listening to Jesus, then... It could, be, it could probably be that you have not given your life to Jesus Christ because he's not the one directing that life. And that's why that person lives in disobedience. So when Jesus, the owner of your life, wanted you to be cleaning his church, that's what he wants from you. But they promoted you to become a pastor of the church, then you are no longer under Jesus. You are under yourself. You live under disobedience. And probably you have done it because somebody somewhere said, ah, I hear from God, this is what you're supposed to do. But the person might be telling a lie. The person might just want 
his church to grow fast and is looking for people. And you know that the best way to get to become a pastor is just to tell you that God said, and you think you will follow because you know you are deaf. Now, if God wants his body to be in the market square because he wants to win souls there, but because God gave you more money, he gave you access to more money, you now saw a better place in the shopping complex. And you went there and you bought a shop. Rather than being in the market square, then you have collected your body from Jesus because Jesus, if he was the owner of your body, he wanted to send it to the market square. But you can't hear him. So you are the one in charge of your body. You have taken your body to the shopping complex. Such a person is living in disobedience. If God wants you to rent a house, and he doesn't want you to build a house yet, because he wants you in the city center, where you rent out, so that you can touch life there. But you are going to buy a land and build a house, and you are celebrating and saying, oh, God provided us a house. And God is looking, looking at you and saying, no, I did not provide the house. You provided the house for yourself. I didn't, I didn't put you to become a landlord. I wanted you in the tenant house, because that is where I want to use you. I needed you among those people because there is something I put to you. That is the assignment where I want you. But you, because somebody came and preached that if you do not build a house, you are against God. As if it's all everybody who gives the life Jesus Christ that will build a house. Even Jesus himself did not build one. And maybe you, God wanted you to have built a house. But you are busy spending the money living in the city center. And God wanted you to have built a house in the outskirts of the town because he wanted you there. But because Jesus is not your Lord and Savior, you are the Lord and Savior of your life. You have taken yourself to city center, away from where God will have sent you if he was the one in charge of your money. So such a person might be giving testimonies, might be saying, celebrate Jesus in my life. Oh, God has settled me. And such person is living totally in disobedience. Totally in disobedience. You need to go back to God and make your relationship with God number one so that you can hear from Him permanently and so that He can direct the affairs of your life. That is the only time you will not live in disobedience. Jesus Christ said, a time is coming and now is the time that those that will worship me will worship me in spirit and in truth. Spirit will be the one that will be directing them. And because the spirit will be telling them to do the truthful things, they will be doing the truthful things. He never said, those who worship me, worship me in spirit, in truth, with their flesh. Anytime flesh is added, it's in disobedience. So I want you to explain your life now. Let's put our life, let's look at ourselves clearly. Did God tell you the things you are doing? Did you get that instruction from God? Now, some of us will say, I've been praying, I've been praying, I've been asking for it, and God has not answered. Yes, it could be that God refused to answer because he has not seen that dedication from you yet. You have not taken it as a do or die matter. Ah, God, I am going to, this is, a do, this is a do or die matter. I am willing to die here. Do you know what Jacob did before they changed his name to Israel? He held on to God and said to his angel, I am not letting you go. We are dying here. Something must happen. I remember when I wanted to be hearing from God. I went to the auditorium there. I went to pray. My noise was disturbing other people, so I went into the bush. And the devil was telling me that this place, snake used to pass. I said, God, the snake killed me. You are the one that killed me. Because if you have started speaking to me by now, I won't be here crying like a madman in the bush. You refuse to speak to me. Are you, I, I have read the Bible. You were speaking to them. I, how can you be speaking to them in the Bible? They met Jesus. They, you are speaking to them. Saul, who later became Paul, was a murderer. He was worse than me. And yet, you spoke to him. And here I am. I call myself a Christian. I can't hear you. I can't say anything. I die here. Kill me. Speak to me. 
I think after I spent like four hours or so there, I was, I made up my mind I'm not going home that night. I've told my wife, I've given her the car, uh, key to the car. I've, I've said to her, it is me and God. He must speak to me. God spoke. God saw that, okay, this, this boy, is not, is, money is no more important to him. Wife, children, everything, he has relegated it. It is me seeking after. God answered. I've told us again. Another time when I met a Muslim woman that was, Jesus was visiting her. And I felt like, huh? You Muslim. Jesus is visiting you. Me. The brother that God has been using to lead prayer and lead three prayers, I have not seen Jesus face to face. Ah, I packed my load, told my wife, I said to everybody at home, I am going to the mountain until I see God. If I don't see Jesus, I'm not coming back. That day I go to the mountain. I prayed seven hours in the night. The next day, seven hours. I made up my mind that 21 hours a day, I am sitting there. I'm not asking for anything. Jesus, I want to see you. That is my prayer point. The second day, the heaven opened. And Jesus came down. And he spoke to me. And gave me some lifelong prophecies. Brethren, when you take him for who he is, and you decide in your heart, that this is now a matter of do or die. Like, I, like the Holy Spirit told us yesterday, if you do not hear God, I cannot guarantee you that you are going to make it to heaven. Because you believe in disobedience. Your everyday life will be in disobedience. The clothes you are wearing will be in, will be in disobedience. The kind of fashion you are putting on will be in disobedience. The cars you buy will be in disobedience. The house you live will be in disobedience. The place you worship will be in disobedience. The money you pay will be in disobedience. The offering to lay on the altar will be, will be disobedience. Your service in the church will be disobedience. Everything will be disobedience. And that's why Jesus said, in Matthew chapter 7, verse 21 to 22, He said, on that day, many, not few, many, excuse me, <coughs> many will come unto me. Many will say, we did this, we did that. We did this. We did that. And he said, I don't know you. Get away from me. You worker of iniquity. Many Christians are workers of iniquities. And God is performing miracles through them. They are giving testimonies on Sundays. But the key thing they did not have, a relationship with Jesus. The one that can bat obedience. The Bible says, in three different parts of the Bible, even in the Old Testament and the New Testament, that, that those who are led of God are the children of God. So when you got a job and Jesus did not lead you, you are a, that person is a bastard, he's not a child of God. When you are doing things in church, in the physical church, in the denomination, and God never sent you there, the spirit didn't lead you there. That person is a bastard. He's not a child of God. When you, you, you gave, many of us, why do we give? You gave because you are selfish. You gave because you are looking for a money doubling God. A pastor taught you that give on that percent shall be returned back to you. I've told us numerous times that that part of the Bible was not talking about money. If you go and read it again, it's not talking about money. But why did you give? You gave because you are thinking that God is the money doubler. So you are hoping that uh, uh, prosperity will come because you are giving. You are not giving because you love God. You are not giving because you are obedient. You are not giving because God told you that, okay, my son, take this, go and do this, take this, go and do that. No, you gave simply because you wanted more in return. It was still self, flesh, selfishness that pushed you to give. It's out of disobedience. I don't know why God is speaking like this this time around. I don't know. I don't know why God is speaking. But God is loving somebody so generously. God is pouring out his love. Because the Bible says, Him that the Lord loveth, he chastiseth. It is him that, the God, that God loves, that God speaks actually to, so that the person can change and finally make it to heaven. If God do not love the person, He will ensure that you have all the things you have on earth and no give everything and just you have a good life because you are ending up in hell. But if He loves you, He will block your way. He will fight you till you get it right. 
The way God deals with me, if I make mistake in fi- my finances, if I do not allow God lead me in finances, if I make a mistake, God will dry it up until I correct my errors. Then He will open it up again. If I make mistake with the anointing, or I go, I will get one power to myself. He will just back up. I will just discover that I'm, I can't find Him again. That helps me to keep me on my toes. That I must be obedient at all times. If God did not send a message and I send it, I am in trouble. And that is how it's supposed to be for all of us if we want to make it to heaven. Maximum, you will live 150 years. And we're all going to die. Then the works we have done should be speaking for us over there. Not that we get there and God say, I have no record. And God say, get out of the way from me. You are a worker of iniquity. You lived your life in iniquity. You are permanently in disobedience. You were not doing things right. I wanted you to be a disciple somewhere and you were somewhere else. I wanted you to serve me in this capacity. You were somewhere else. And God never changed. If you look at the book of Leviticus chapter 10 and read that story, Le- Leviticus chapter 10, verse 1 down. Two children, the sons of Aaron, Nadab and Abihu decided that they want to go and put fire in the incense on the altar of God. And God called it a strange fire. I never asked them to come and do this job. Where did I call them? Where did I anoint you? Where did I call you? Where did I appoint you for that job that you went to start doing? God killed them instantly. A lot of us are giving God strange offerings. Strange tithes, strange services, strange uh, prayers. We are living in strange places, working in strange organizations, doing strange businesses. And God is looking at us and saying, these are strange fires. And he's waiting on the day of judgment to sentence us to death. We will not die a second death in Jesus' name. The death of Jesus shall be enough for us. May we totally take the effect of the the death of Jesus. The only way to make sure that the death of Jesus applies to you is for you also to ensure that you die with Jesus so that you can get the life of Jesus. That's the reason why we do baptism. Baptism is a physical representative of what is happening. I die with Jesus and I come alive with Jesus. I die with Jesus, and I come alive. So the life I live is no longer my life. It's not the life of Jesus. Now the owner of the life needs to be giving me instructions about how should I live his life. My son, you are going to this place today. Yes, my Lord. You are the owner of my body. You are the owner of my, of my system. I follow you. My daughter, this is what you are wearing today. Yes, my Lord. You are the owner of my body. You are the owner of my life. My children, this is where I want you to walk. Yes, Lord. You are the owner of my body. You are the owner of my life. I don't want you to minister here. I want you to minister there. Yes, Lord. You are the owner of my body. You are the owner of my life. But that cannot happen when we cannot hear God. So you still take us back to that prayer point. I want you to rent prayers to heaven. I want you to convert to permanent prayer points. You are eating, you are praying. You are bathing, you are praying. You are in the toilet, you are praying. You are in the car, you are praying. You wake up in the night to go and ease yourself, you come to prayer. God, it is a do or die affair. I want to be connected back to you in such a way that I hear you every day. That I have a, my relationship with you repaired. And I'm able to have a permanent, continuous working relationship with you. I want my relationship with you to be number one thing in my life. Remember that Jesus said, if you cannot hate mother, hate father, hate husband, hate wife, hate houses, hate land, hate the world, and follow me, you are not ready to be a disciple. That's what Jesus said. I will ensure that I post that verse also with this message so you can see it. How do you show that you hate them? By loving God beyond everything. It's not that you ate there with, I'm angry, you have hurt me, I hate you. No, 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 no. 
is that you must love God to the extent that you have no... It is through God. Everything. Everything you do to anybody is not because of that person. It's because of God. God said I should give you. God said I should let you go. God said my car belongs to you from now on. God said I should, I should help you. God said it is now God that is leading you. It's, not that, it's no longer, oh, because you are my wife, I give you this. Because you are my, my darling, I give No, it's no longer like that. It is because God, I, I now belong to God. It's no longer because I love our church. I love the general overseer. I love the, my pastor. That's why I'm doing this. No, 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 no. It is because I love God and God asked me to come here. God asked me to give to this one. God asked me to do this. That is the only reason. I pray that God will help you to get this message. I pray that the Holy Spirit will minister it to you personally. I pray that He will help you. This message is so key. And I, I, we don't do this regularly, but I will do this. I, I've gotten, I, somebody sent me one, and the Holy Spirit ministered to me that we should do this, so I'm going to do this. Um, if you have questions on this matter, because it's important, please send it to us. We'll answer it in our next voice note. Just send questions that you have. This is important. Your relationship with God must be repaired to the extent that you can hear God every day of your life. That is the only time you will live in obedience. If you cannot hear God, you cannot see your discerning spirit is not alive. Such a person will live the whole life in iniquity. And Jesus will not spare the person. The two stories we have looked at, the one of yesterday, Jesus did not spare that man. The young prophet who was killed. In the one we read today, Leviticus, Jesus did not spare Nada Banabil. They were killed. In the New Testament, you might be saying, okay, this is the Old Testament, this is the Old Testament. In the New Testament, Ananias and Sapphira, the wife, Jesus did not spare them. He killed them instantly. Now, there are a lot of people that are walking dead. Jesus has just said this one. He's going to hell. He's continually living in disobedience. This is a hell product. Of course, I will use him to perform miracles. I will use him to help people. I will use him for projects. But he's going to hell. May that never be our portion in Jesus' name. I want you to go to God in prayer tonight again. God, my relationship with you is number one. Ah, this is a do or die affair. I want my altar with you repaired. I want to hear you. I want to see you. And I want my discerning spirit alive. I want you to be leading me every day. And you will go to God and begin to ask, where I'm worshipping now, did you send me there? The money I'm paying, did you ask me to pay them? The clothes in my wardrobe, which one is it that you never wanted me to have? The cast in my hand, yes, Lord. Are you, is that the one you want me to buy? Or have I made a mistake? The house I'm living, am I in the right place? Am I supposed to have built this house? Or am I supposed to have rented this place? It's time to go to God in prayer. I pray with the whole of my heart for you. Because I want God to take all of us to heaven. Heaven is still too scanty. Millions, billions die and they end up in hell. You are not going to go there in Jesus' name. And some will make it to heaven, but they have nothing there. They are empty. You will not be empty when you die. I pray for you with the whole of my heart that God will minister this message to you in the way you will understand. Via revelation, via speaking, via hijacking your sensory organ to talk to you. God will explain this message himself to you in Jesus' name. This will not be but as me said. This will be God's speaking to you personally in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray that God will help you to, to reconsider your ways. And I pray that God will not be quiet concerning your case. By mercy, He will speak to you. By mercy, He will begin to lead you now. So you stop living a life of iniquity and living in the life of righteousness. 
We don't know who is going to die among God's next. Because there is nobody that has been born that did not die. Even Jesus, you died at the age of 33. So we don't know the time you have set for us. But Father, we ask of you. Help us to make our way right now. Because eternity is more important than this present time. Help us to make our ways right with you this very moment. Help us not to deliver it tomorrow. Help us to begin right now. And as we do it, Father, the benefits of your children, let it be ours in Jesus' name. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Amen. You can go into your personal prayers now. God bless you.